Hey everyone, in this video we'll be looking at chapter 17 of Peopleware, which is called Playing Well with Others. It's by far the shortest chapter I've seen so far. In fact, I think that some of the chapter summaries I've written were longer than the entirety of this one, which is just under two pages long. With a title like Playing Well with Others, you might imagine that this chapter talks about the various kinds of diversity, and if you imagined that, you'd be imagining correctly. Decades ago, programmers were a sort of way, a certain demographic group. They were white guys who went to Stanford and then either started companies or were hired by companies who were started by their fellow alumni. But despite Stanford's relative dominance of representation in the upper echelons of Silicon Valley society, the person profile of an engineer has broadened up quite a bit. There are engineers all over the world. There are engineers representing all ethnicities, social strata, and the field that was once dominated by men is now increasingly welcome to women as well. The benefits of diversity should be apparent. Although the Bay Area purports to value diversity more in speech than in practice, some true progress has been made and its value is already showing. More women in the workforce generally correlates to greater levels of empathy, which is a trade often associated with women. They've been able to change how teams are structured as well as what values are prioritized. Beyond gender diversity, there's an increasing, increasing geographic diversity on teams. Whether employing immigrants or augmenting your team with employees all over the world, the reality is that international influences are taking hold in American industry, and that's a great thing. One of Silicon Valley's weaknesses has been to assume that the products that they, are, that they make are essentially for people like them white, upper class, politically progressive, etc. But most of the world doesn't fit that profile, and bringing in people who are not those things can, at best, inform product and industrial development that is good for the needs of the whole world, rather than just serving as a thinly veiled mechanism for transferring wealth from venture capitalists to landlords, which is what the valley is at its worst. Finally, the authors talk about the need for continuity in the team to allow culture and rhythm to gel. A certain amount of planning and restraint must be shown. Otherwise, ongoing newness will cause fatigue and turnover, which is doubly counterproductive in your effort to build a thriving team. That's all for this chapter. I hope it was helpful and thought-provoking, and I'll see you all in the next one.